The reality is that in today's world, many people aren't actually ready for a relationship, and many others are ready, but have no idea what the hell that means or how to create a real relationship. Because of this, so much misinformation abounds. Part of this misinformation and confusion is because of the fact that there's a split within society right now between people who love to propagate the idea that you're completely responsible for how other people feel. And to the opposite side, you're not responsible for how anyone else feels. Both polarized views lead to suffering. Both polarized views, in fact, come from trauma. And both polarized views don't represent the whole truth of reality. In recent years, the philosophy that you're not responsible for anyone else's feelings is the one that has been perpetuated the most. It's been taught by spiritual teachers, counselors, life coaches, and everything in between. For this reason, it's this philosophy that I'm going to focus on first. For thousands of years and still today, the primary way that we have relationships is actually dysfunctional. The majority of families in the world today operate in a dysfunctional way. That is that the meeting of the needs within this family happened to the detriment of many members of that family. That's basically what a dysfunctional relationship is. Now, most of us don't recognize this because dysfunctional is the norm. One of these dysfunctional ways that needs are met in the family is that instead of teaching the child to consider the parent's feelings as well as their own, the parent makes the child responsible to make him or her feel good all the time. To do this, the child has to give themselves up and let go of his or her own needs, wants, feelings, and thoughts in order to remain close with this parent. This is enmeshment. It makes the child not only lose their sense of self, but also sense of freedom and free will. Connection is felt as an unbearable pressure to this person, like a ball and chain or a prison that closes in on them. If children in this family can't find a way to give themselves up in a way that makes mom or dad happy, then what they end up with is being pushed away from the other members of the family. They find themselves... Isolated, they find themselves being the carrier for the collective shadow of that family. It's massive consequence. What these people basically learn is everyone's out for themselves. Because that's actually the case in a dysfunctional family. Everybody's only ever really concerned with their own needs and how to meet them and how to manipulate other people so as to get those needs met. <laughs> so you can see it would be an incredible relief to come up to a teaching or somebody that tells you that, that you're not responsible for how anyone else feels. Such a relief when you've been taught that it's your responsibility completely how somebody like mom or dad felt. It's also an incredible relief to hear that when you're on the opposite side of the spectrum, that second child who was ostracized. Because now, it's not that mom and dad didn't love you. It's literally just that they were never actually meant to. Take responsibility for your emotions. Basically, it's this relief that causes people to love and align with this philosophy, regardless of whether it's true or not. In other words, the people who align with this philosophy, the philosophy that you're not responsible for how anyone else feels, feel that if they were connected to somebody and in any way responsible for how that person felt, they would lose their own feelings, their own desires, their own needs, their own wishes, their own sense of self. So, how did they cover this over? They cover it over by saying, actually, I'm taking their power away by becoming responsible for their emotions instead of letting them be responsible for their emotions. But to maintain this philosophy, people have to contradict themselves and draw a lot of nuance. Here's some examples. They have to say, well, actually, it's right to take responsibility for how a little baby feels because they can't meet their own needs or do X and X and X and they don't have free will yet. So at what point does that arbitrarily end? Or they might say a pet or animal shouldn't be responsible for itself when adopted by a person as opposed to being in the wild, but a human should always be responsible for itself. Well, then what differentiates a human from an animal? The main problem with people who propagate this idea is that they don't actually believe in oneness, regardless of whether they preach or not. Everything you think, say, and do affects the whole. You can't escape this no matter how hard you try because oneness is one of the more objective truths of this universe. People who perpetuate this idea see a connection as a direct contradiction to freedom and personal power. They often argue that it's more loving to leave someone to their own empowerment, in this case responsibility, than it is to take responsibility for them in any given scenario. 
This theory may be true in some scenarios, depending on a person's best interest, but it falls apart in others. For example, some people can't actually regulate their emotions. Expecting them to regulate their own emotions when they get into a scenario where they are reactive to something that's happening to them is just as cruel as dumping somebody who's paralyzed at the bottom of a staircase and telling them to climb it. It's incredibly disconnected. Another example is, let's say somebody really wants to go to a college super bad, but they can't afford it because they come from a super poor family. Telling them, I believe you can get the money if you care enough, is not always loving. Sometimes it's just ignorant on multiple levels. We're using the idea of empowering them to do it themselves as a cover for the fact that we don't want to be financially responsible for helping them. Did you get that kind of most people that have this philosophy? Just literally don't want to be responsible for how other people feel. Or even considering other people. Often these people also use cognitive reframing techniques to try to escape from their own emotions and by doing so actually create splits in their own consciousness. I'll give you another example. If I drove a car over one of their children and said, I'm not responsible for the way you feel, you're responsible for the way you feel, it would be obvious that either their own philosophy would fall apart because I have absolutely caused the emotional reaction they had to their child being run over, this would just simply be a cover for my abuse. Or, if they try to reframe out of it, it would be an attempt to dissociate or bypass their painful feelings so as to control the way they feel. This is not resolution, this is fragmentation. The vast majority of the people who subscribe to this philosophy think they have it all figured out because they're not in a lot of pain. The reason they're not in a lot of pain is because they've dissociated from their own feelings. They've escaped out of it. And yes, this even includes many of the spiritual teachers walking the planet today. They've created coping mechanisms to prevent them from feeling, especially those negative emotional states. And they've called this healthy. By definition, a coping mechanism is not healing, it is escapism. It's really important to understand that. Now this includes not feeling other people. Why? Because if I'm feeling how someone else feels, if I'm seeing into them, really attuning to them, listening to them, then I'm going to feel it through my own body. So obviously if I'm not gonna be willing to feel my own emotions, I'm not gonna feel anyone else. It can be loving to empower somebody, obviously, therefore it can absolutely be empowering for someone to take responsibility for themselves, including their emotions. But it can also be a way to hide from facing and resolving our own trauma instead of integrating it. It can also be a disguise for our own refusal to feel emotions and our own refusal to admit to where we don't wanna be responsible because we feel ashamed for not wanting to be responsible in that way. It can be a total cover for an abuse, and it's an especially good way of avoiding the feeling of being powerless in any way to other people. If you subscribe to the philosophy that you are not responsible for how anybody else feels, then you perceive yourself to be separate and disconnected. You are not in a relationship with anyone but you, and you're using all kinds of spiritual justification for it. It's also a bit ignorant. Because here's one thing that you need to understand. People learn how to do certain things, like emotionally regulate themselves, for example, by being regulated. For a person, this is how a child, for example, learns to regulate their own emotions, because their parent did it. So obviously in that type of a scenario, the child learned how to be responsible for their own emotions by their parent first taking responsibility for their emotions. And this is why. The cry it out method is one of the biggest embarrassments that ever happened to mankind. Because the very real trauma you experienced in your early relationships was the feeling that relationships make you trapped, you are trending towards spiritually justified narcissism and even sociopathy, and it is not an accurate view of reality. Now let's look at the other philosophy. If you're somebody that believes you're totally responsible for other people's emotions, you also don't have a finger on reality. First off, you're probably not going to identify yourself as this type of person, even though you are. In your childhood, you got mixed messages. On the one hand, you were expected to take responsibility for yourself as a child and for a great many things, regardless of whether you were ready for it or not. This made you feel abandoned. But at the same time, when your parents expected this of you, you weren't stupid. You saw that this hyper-responsibility that was expected of you was a shirking of their own responsibility, meaning that you felt firsthand the pain of someone not taking responsibility for you, or the pain of them taking responsibility for you and others where they didn't want to. So you have a split within you between the part of you that does want to be responsible for everyone and everything, including how people feel, because you feel like the feeling of being a good guy and the solid feeling of knowing you're nothing like those people who hurt you is what you want. 
You also like the connection you feel in taking responsibility for other people. But at the same time, you're cracking apart at the seams because all the pressure of that responsibility is not something that somebody can live with. You resent people because of that pressure. You don't want to be responsible for things that you don't want to be responsible for any more than anyone else does. If you adhere to the idea that you're totally responsible for how other people feel, not only are you not seeing reality clearly, you're also not seeing other people's capability clearly. And in many scenarios, what you're doing is stripping people's free will and stripping their empowerment from them by making them totally dependent on you. But here's your shadow. You're doing this not out of love, but because making them dependent meets some needs that you have in some way. If you subscribe to the philosophy that you're responsible for how everybody else feels, then you're actually not in a relationship with yourself because you're bulldozing the parts of yourself that don't want to do something, that don't want to take responsibility in certain scenarios. You're not actually in a relationship with yourself because obviously to take full responsibility for how somebody else feels, you have to totally suppress, deny, reject, and disown certain aspects of yourself. You're not free. You've lost freedom because you're not choosing with your free will what to be responsible for if you're simply taking responsibility for everything. You're also taking responsibility for things that you don't control in any way or things that in order to control you have to be inauthentic to do so. Here's an example. You can't control if someone dislikes you. They may dislike you because you remind them of their mother. If you're taking responsibility for that, you will fail. You will have to eradicate from yourself or change any trait that reminds them of their mother or work on them day and night like a therapist so they're no longer triggered by that trait. For example, if you drive a certain car that makes someone feel jealous, if you take responsibility for how that makes them feel, you have to sell the car, buy a car that doesn't make them feel jealous, you've just enabled them in their personal insecurities, and at the same time, screwed yourself. If you adhere to the philosophy that you're responsible for how everybody else feels, you have taken a poisoned apple. This is not really living. This is taking responsibility, which tastes so virtuous, but kills you at the same time. And the pressure you've taken on will not only make you inauthentic or self-hating, it will eventually kill you. It will also make you a match the opposite polarity. Basically a vast array of people who will take no responsibility at all, leaving you to do all of it. So let's take a look at the third element, shall we? Both polarized views are not an objective view of reality. Both are coming from a space of resistance. Both, in fact, are resistant to one another because they are completely terrified of the reality that the other represents. The people who adhere to the philosophy that you're not responsible for how anyone else feels are terrified of losing themselves and their own personal freedom and their own personal needs and their own empowerment. They're terrified of powerlessness and enmeshment. Now to the opposite side, people who adhere to the philosophy that you are responsible for how everyone else feels are terrified of this being a doggy dog world where they are completely unsafe because nobody is actually going to care what kind of impact they have on you and where they themselves, if they subscribe to this philosophy, become the very people who hurt them the most. Now here is the deep pain underneath both of these philosophies that neither one of these polarities sees. It's that no one actually chose to be responsible for me because they wanted to. And that's what I really wanted. Neither the person who subscribes to the idea that they're not responsible for how anyone else feels or the person who subscribes to the idea that they are responsible for how other people feel have experienced someone choosing with their free will to be responsible for them because they want to. And neither person that subscribes to either philosophy is actually choosing with their free will what to be responsible for. Therefore... Both views are in fact coming from a state of determinism. So how do we unravel ourselves from this vast polarity, which neither of which represents reality? I'll give you a list. Step one, we need to graduate into and consciousness. The truth of this universe is that in this physical dimension, you call yourself by one name, you see through one singular perspective, and so... You could say that your perception is accurate, that you are separate, but it is also inaccurate, because at a much larger level, your being, whether it's individuated currently or not, is still an expression of the very same consciousness making up everything else in existence. So, at the same time as you are separate, you are also not separate at all. Do you notice the contradiction? 
The only way to graduate beyond the pain of this contradiction is and consciousness, to consider that both are true. For more information on this, watch my video titled And Consciousness, The Modern Day Replacement for the Middle Way. When we embrace that both aspects are true, we find a way for them to be complementary instead of contradictory. Two, if we are living from a space of love, meaning we are including somebody as part of ourselves, doing so includes how they feel. We very much need to get to a place where we can say, it makes me feel good when you feel good, or it hurts me when you're hurting. This is what the world needs at this time. But here's the thing. This is what people who subscribe to the philosophy that they are not responsible for how anybody else feels don't understand. By taking someone else's best interests as part of our own, including their emotions and how they feel, that doesn't mean we get rid of our own. What we do is try to find a third option. If we can't find a third option where both of our needs are met and both of our best interests are capitalized on, we must consider incompatibility and or drastically changing the roles we play in each other's lives. For more information about this, watch my video titled Incompatibility, A Harsh Reality in Relationships. Some of you who are terrified of taking responsibility for how anybody else feels, feels like your life's going to be nothing but a tiptoeing act where you're just in constant tension going around making sure you never make anybody feel bad. But here's the thing. Sometimes making somebody feel good all the time is not actually in alignment with their best interests, is it? Actually, you're caring about their short-term feelings and not their long-term feelings if you're thinking that way. Coping mechanisms make people feel better temporarily, for example, but we all know that that can lead to ruin. Sometimes telling someone a truth, even if it feels bad to them, may be more loving and considerate of their best interests and their long-term feelings than saying whatever it is that makes them feel good right here in this moment. We have to be attuned enough to somebody to feel into them, see into them, listen to them, and understand what their best interests actually are, including the best interests in terms of their emotions. For this reason, watch my video titled Attunement, A Key to a Good Relationship. The reality is not everybody's going to take your best interests as part of their own best interests because of where we are at this current point in time. But whether they decide to take your best interests as part of theirs or not really isn't about you. So it should be an individual decision. You can still take someone's best interests as part of your own regardless of whether they're doing that back. It depends on whether that's self-loving for you to do. For some of us, the answer will be yes. For some of us, the answer might be no. Three, we need to begin to choose our responsibilities with our free will because we want them. This is the actual freedom we're looking for. Chosen responsibility is where the human race needs to be headed. To do this, we choose what we want to become responsible for because it would make us feel good to do it, not because it would make us feel like a good person to do what we don't want to do. One person cannot take all the responsibility in their lives, and so what we do is we divide up the responsibility according to who does it most naturally, and likes it the most. When we begin to deliberately choose responsibility with our free will and thus see responsibilities divided up in this way within society, we will not see such a huge gap in society between people who take responsibility for everything and people who take responsibility for absolutely nothing. We have to accept that as people, we are perfectly willing to take the pressure of responsibility, or any pressure for that matter, when it's pressure that is wanted. One person may love the responsibility of somebody's emotional state. Another person may hate it. One person may love the responsibility of cooking. Another person may decide that that makes them want to claw their eyes out. And what you'll notice too is that there needs to be some flexibility here because for some people what they want to take responsibility for will change a bit. Not everybody wants to cook all meals every day. Sometimes we want to take responsibility for this and other days responsibility for another thing. So the flexibility within our relationships is also an important thing to develop. To understand more about this, I want you to watch a video that I have that's titled, What Kind of Supportive Are You? We should not get ourselves into positions where we will be expected to be responsible for things we don't want to be responsible for. And let's have an honesty moment. We're already doing this. We're already shirking responsibility where we don't want it. We're already manipulatively putting responsibility on other people's shoulders when we don't want that responsibility. <laughs> so let's be straightforward about it. Let's just say I don't want to take responsibility in that way. 
and find somebody else to take responsibility for that thing and figure out what kind of responsibility we actually genuinely want. Now, the one thing that we both need to take responsibility for if we choose with our free will to have relationships is connection. Connection is a two-way street. One person can break the connection. It doesn't take two. And for that reason, it does take two to maintain the connection. Basically, both parties have to choose with our free will to be committed to that connection. Four, we have to be willing, and with our free will, to feel. This includes feeling other people. This approach recognizes our mutuality and interconnectedness with other people in a way that appreciates how we together build and co-create our realities. Something that we need to cultivate for this is the capacity to be with our feelings and the feelings of other people, even when they're difficult. I'll give you an example. Let's say that we've made some decision in our life or we've done something that negatively impacts somebody in some way, and as a result, they naturally feel those negative emotions as a result of what we did. What we need to do is to listen to and really feel to the validity of their feelings at the same time as feeling the very real feelings within ourselves. When we do this, we don't automatically just shift our life to whatever the other person wants. We might decide that doing that is the best option to resolve the emotional state they're in, or by considering both our feelings and the other person's feelings, we may come to the awareness that we needed to go through with whatever it was that we did. Still, this is the alternative to dismissing their feelings or going back on our decision because of their feelings and then resenting them for it. If we develop the ability to really be with feelings, ourselves and someone else's, as if they were our own, we develop the ability to respond in ways that accommodate both ourselves and other people at the same time. Basically, when you develop the capacity to really be with your emotions and another person's emotions, what you create is a win-win world, which is not the world you live in today. The world you live in today is a win-lose type of scenario world. It's a zero-sum game. Five, you have got to break free from the societal constructs that tell you how you should be. This will prevent your capacity to consider other people's emotions and all kinds of other things in your life immensely. It will destroy what you do with responsibility. Society loves to say that certain roles should look a certain way and based on that should come with certain responsibilities. You're basically screwed then. For example, when society gives you an idea of what a mom should be and what she should be responsible for, a woman tends to destroy her child because she either does not take certain responsibilities and places them squarely on the child instead, or she takes responsibility for what she doesn't want to be responsible for and resents the child for it. She is too guilted by society to find other people to fill those roles, which in turn allow her to really take responsibility for her child where she would want to, and that is assuming that she even wants to have a kid in the first place. Now let's say that society says that a husband should be responsible for the way that his wife feels, after all, that is his life partner. But let's say that in his childhood he experienced too much enmeshment with his mother. Chances are this is not going to be in his best interest. He's going to go after a woman acting completely emotionally available until the minute she commits, at which point his authentic truth is going to come through eventually that he doesn't want to be responsible for how another woman feels. Now, there's a problem. Based on wanting to fit himself into that societal construct, he's now chosen a wife that probably is not the right wife for him. He would have if he had been totally honest and responsible for his own emotions in this particular state and the responsible for the emotions of the other woman, would have chosen a woman who was much more independent and let the woman find a man who really did want the responsibility of how his wife felt. Why I'm getting into this is because we have to see our own authentic truth and other people's authentic truth in order to genuinely accommodate for how each other feels. Because we have to structure our life based on the way the other person feels. Otherwise, we live in an inauthentic life where we're trying to cram people into these types of constructs. Six, we have to accept that what is empowering for one person may be disempowering for another person. If we adhere to the philosophy that you're not responsible for how anybody else feels, what you tend to be is the type of person who thinks that it's 100% empowering to take responsibility for everything, especially yourself. Actually, it's not always true. It can be a prison instead. What it means is that you're going to take responsibility for things you don't want responsibility for. We have to realize that we work more like a car engine works. Can you imagine walking up to the transmission in your car and saying, listen, 
you need to take responsibility for what those brake pads are doing or having responsibility for. It's not going to work that way. It can be super empowering for somebody to take responsibility for something in a certain scenario. It can also be super disempowering, which means it can also be super empowering to let go of a certain responsibility. What if I told you today that for some people, it is not only healing, but empowering for them to not take responsibility for their emotions and to let someone in their life do that, to let someone in their life emotionally regulate them. <laughs> yeah. It can also be super empowering for somebody to take total responsibility for their emotions. It depends on the person and the circumstance. Seven, we need to develop an abundance mentality relative to responsibility. This is especially true because it has been so hammered into your head at this point that you have to take responsibility for yourself to such a degree that we now believe that it is literally wrong for us to have anyone else in our life taking responsibility for that aspect. As people, we have a really bad relationship to abundance, especially as it applies to resources. We're coming from a place of scarcity with both the philosophy that we're totally responsible or not at all responsible for how people feel. We don't see that there will always be somebody who does want a specific responsibility. We either see ourselves as the only resource for others or the only resource for ourselves. If I tell myself nobody wants to take responsibility for something, like nobody wants to take responsibility for my emotions, based on that belief, I'm only going to be a match to people who reinforce this idea for me. I'm only going to be a match to people who don't want to take responsibility for me emotionally, who don't want to take into consideration how I feel. To believe that no one will take responsibility is a false assumption. It is also a false assumption to believe that someone else always will take responsibility. These polarities always attract. They gravitate to each other like magnets reinforcing each other's reality. It's not an accurate picture of truth. There will be someone who does want a certain responsibility. The question is, are we open to finding that person? Eight, meet your needs. This includes potentially finding someone else to meet them. <laughs> when people don't want to take any responsibility for how somebody else feels and doesn't want to be connected to how somebody else feels enough to take, you know, to feel like they're the one that causes any emotional reaction in them, chances are they're starving to death. When you go deep into these people's psyche, what it is is that their needs aren't being met. These people can't take any more responsibility any more than a bank that has no money in it can handle a withdrawal. For this reason, I want you to watch my two videos on YouTube. The first is titled, Meet Your Needs, and the second is titled, Dependence versus Independence. People love to cover over and justify things they don't want to change. Religions have been doing this for centuries. For example, we want to maintain control of women. So how are we going to do this? Oh, I know. Let's tell a story about how Women are the byproduct of men, actually, and so they really don't belong to themselves. If we want a man to stop doing something, let's just tell the story about what horrible consequence awaits him after this life if he does. <laughs> Today, the spiritual field uses ideologies to justify both polar beliefs of I'm responsible for how everyone feels and I'm not responsible for how anyone else feels. That doesn't mean that either is the complete truth. What if you could choose to be responsible for making yourself feel better because that felt empowering and awesome for you in this moment? What if you could let other people take responsibility for doing things and saying things that make you feel better? Because in that scenario, letting go of that responsibility actually felt amazing and empowering and freeing. What if that even empowered them in some scenarios? What if either option could be in alignment with your growth path at a certain time? What if it could be empowering for one person to let go of a responsibility and empowering for another person to take it? If you're in the place where empowerment is to take responsibility, watch my video titled Responsibility, Why, When, and How to Take It. Never go after someone to take responsibility for something they don't want to take responsibility for. That includes your emotions. And remember, sometimes really owning your life doesn't just entail taking responsibility. It also includes knowing what responsibilities to let go of. Have a good week.